Hi, this is David at Mash IT. Now, we recently reviewed the Surface Pro 8. We really loved the device, and as I mentioned in that video, I wanted to quickly compare it to our previous Surface Pro 7 Plus that we've been using for the last year. Now, Gary and I both bought a Surface Pro 7 Plus last year when they were launched. I had the i5 because I wanted the fanless model, and Gary had the i7. He's a bit of a heavier user than me. Now, during my Surface Pro 8 review, I did mention that I would actually put them head to head and show you the differences between these two models to see whether it's worthwhile spending the extra price difference on the Surface Pro 8, or whether you should save yourself a bit of money and either get the Surface Pro 7 Plus or even the 7. So firstly, we're gonna take a quick look around these two models and see the differences between the two. Now, the Surface Pro 4, right the way through to 7 Plus, had the same chassis design. So if you've used any of the previous Surface Pros, 4, 5, 6, or 7, you'll know what this one model looks like, which is the 7 Plus that's here in the studio. At the end of 2021, Microsoft launched a redesigned Surface Pro 8. As you can see side by side, they don't look like there's a great deal of difference. But firstly, it's slightly taller and a little bit narrower than the Surface Pro 7 Plus. So it's also a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier. But this allows a couple of great features on the Surface Pro 8 over the previous models. So you'll see straight away here, although the laptop is only a little bit taller, but it's actually even slightly narrower than the 7 and 7 Plus, we've got reduced bezels on the Surface Pro 8. We've still got reasonable sized bezels at the top and bottom, but the side bezels have been massively reduced. And this has allowed Microsoft to put in a 13 inch display in the Surface Pro 8. Whereas the old fashioned 7 Plus or 7 had the 12.3 inch pixel sense display. Now the good news is whichever one you buy, you get a 267 PPI display. So both these screens look just as crisp as each other, but you get a slightly higher resolution on the Surface Pro 8. So that's the first big change between these two models. Next, we have a difference in ports. Our old 7 Plus came with a USB 3 and a USB-C port, whereas the Surface Pro 8 comes with two Thunderbolt ports. I was initially disappointed they lost the USB 3 port because I did often find that handy plugging in mice and other legacy peripherals. But Thunderbolt 4 is a massive upgrade for the Surface Pro line. Not only is it a more versatile port, be it for docks, hubs, monitors, and other bits and pieces, but you've got a much higher bandwidth on Thunderbolt meaning you can even use eGPUs with this model now. So with an eGPU, you could actually do a little bit of gaming on this machine. Also with the 7 Plus, you had a micro SD card reader hidden under the kickstand at the back. This is now gone with the Surface Pro 8. And on the 7 Plus, the i5s or the i3s were fanless and the i7s had a fan. Whereas on the Surface Pro 8, you've got a redesigned cooling system and every model comes with a fan. So whether you get the i5 or the i7, you will get a fan. But the good news is, where they've redesigned the cooling system, the fan is a lot nicer sounding, and we will test that in a little while. Now, as we look around the actual devices themselves, you'll notice that the button layouts have changed. On the Surface Pro 7 Plus, on the top, we have a power button and the volume rocker. On the Surface Pro 8, they've taken everything off the top now, so the top is completely smooth. And on the left-hand side, you've got the volume rocker, and underneath the headset jack. And on the right side, you've got the power button. And notice on the Surface Pro 8, the headset jack is much lower down below the actual volume rocker. This to me is slightly better than the Surface Plus because obviously with it being right at the top, when you're using it in a laptop mode, you've got the cable hanging right over the top of the laptop. If I had my way designing this, I would put the headset cable much nearer the bottom. Now both of these machines come with a Surface Connect port and the Surface Charger that we've been using for years. This is a great magnetic tip charger and they're both exactly the same in that regard. You can also use the Surface Dock on both of these models. I've used the Surface Dock for a long time and I do find it handy. But now that we have got either USB-C or Thunderbolt, you can use other docks or monitors to plug straight into these devices anyway. Now both of these models have the same Surface Pro kickstands with the same angle of incline. And this is a great feature in these two-in-one devices. And the main reason that obviously Gary and I both bought these devices, using them for digital note-taking and other creativity sort of tasks, with the pen, having the kickstand is amazing. It's so handy. Rip off the type cover, grab your pen, and you can put it at the, the correct angle for yourself to be able to draw. Now, with regards to the type covers, although they look very similar between the two models, one thing you will notice, if we flip them down, the Surface Pro 8 has the pen well, just like the Surface Pro X. This, this contains the new Microsoft Surface Slim pen. The Surface Pro 7, as you see, there's nothing on there pen is actually attached to the side via magnets. 
I much prefer the pen in the Magwell because the amount of times that I've knocked my pen off the side of the surface, it just happens to me all the time putting it in and out of sleeves and bags. Whereas once it's in this Magwell, you're not going to lose it. It also charges the pen, which is handy, whereas the old fashioned pen has batteries. Now they do last for probably about a year, but that is an inconvenience when they go. But accessing the pen is obviously much quicker when it's just on the side of your device, rather than having to pop the type cover forward to access it. With regards to popping it forward as well, if you happen to use the keyboard flat on the desk, the older fashioned Surface Pro 7 Plus sits really nice and flush when you've popped it down off the screen. Whereas the Surface Pro 8, it sort of pops itself up because of this magwell. And you'll see there's a little bit of play when you've got it flat on the table. So if you are running it flat all the time, the older fashioned Surface Pro 7 cover is more comfortable to use. But if I'm honest, I've always got mine popped up for the better typing angle. So whilst we're also talking about the pens and the type covers, obviously when you're drawing, you rip your type cover off and you're using your pen. The biggest difference here is that the Surface Pro 8's new slim pen actually has haptic feedback. This feels really nice when you're using the pen on the screen. You actually feel like you're drawing on paper with the feedback that it gets you. And you can actually adjust the sensitivity of that feedback depending on how you like your pen to feel. Whereas the old fashioned Surface Pro 7 pen, although good, it doesn't quite feel in the same league. Now I was initially concerned about the shape of this slim pen because it's actually a completely different shape. The old fashioned one was round and I really enjoyed it. But having used this for a little while now, I find it incredibly comfortable and a really good tool to use. Now another feature with these pens is the fact that the Surface Pro 8 now includes a 120 hertz screen. We will talk about more of that in the screen section in a minute. But what this does do is improve the inking ability of this pen and make it slightly faster and more accurate than the older 7 Plus. So if drawing on the screen is really important to you, then that might be a good reason to pick up the 8 over the older 7 Plus. So moving up to the screen, as I mentioned, you've got the bigger 13 inch screen with 120 hertz on this Surface Pro 8, as opposed to the older 12.3 inch pixel sense display with much bigger bezels on the 7 Plus. Now the 7 Plus's screen, the 12.3 inch, has been the same panel they've used right the way back since the Surface Pro 4, and it is starting to show its age. It's a good panel, it's clear, bright, they're both bright screens, but you will notice it's much, much slower than the Surface Pro 8, because not only this is a 120 hertz panel, it's definitely a faster panel with pixel response time as well. So if that's something that's important to you, the Surface Pro 8 is definitely a much nicer panel to use. And from an actual aesthetics and looks perspective, it does look much nicer with these new slimmer bezels. Now I was initially worried again about the fact that with these slimmer bezels, if you're using it in tablet, it might be a bit more uncomfortable to use or be touching on the screen. I haven't found it an issue in day-to-day -day use. I've been using this now for about three, coming up four weeks, uh, and I've had no problems at all. And having used them both, I do much prefer using this device. Even if it's a little bit heavier, even if it's a little bit taller, it's still very comfortable to hold. It feels great in your hands, and you've got that bigger screen size. Moving up to the speakers, both of these devices have forward firing speakers. They sound like this. Speaker test on the Surface Pro 8 versus Surface Pro 7 Plus, starting with the Surface Pro 8 at 50% volume. Surface Pro 7. Now 80 percent 100%. Now you can clearly hear from that test, the Surface Pro 8 speakers are much better. This has been a massive improvement and this is something I wasn't even expecting. Of all the things that I saw uh, when I saw this being released, 
I didn't even notice that there were any improvements to the speakers. But I do listen to music when I'm working and I do often watch YouTube videos. So having the much better speakers on the Surface Pro 8 for me has been a massive improvement over the previous design and something I didn't realise I would appreciate as much as I actually do over the 7 Plus. Now don't get me wrong, the 7 Plus speakers are okay, but they are very quiet and there's just they're not in the same league. So if sound is important to you for the onboard speakers, then you want to be looking towards the Surface Pro 8. Now moving up to the top. Both of these Surface Pros have Windows Hello Facial Recognition. They are incredibly quick and incredibly accurate, and this has always been my favorite way of logging in, and both of these work flawlessly. Now, when it comes to the actual webcam and microphones, they sound and look like this. This is what the camera and microphones look and sound like on the Surface Pro 8. And this is the webcam and the microphones on the Surface Pro 7 Plus. And being a Surface Pro device, both of these actual devices have rear cameras. Now I'm just going to pop a few uh, stills of each camera side by side. Let me know in the comment section down below which do you think looks better. Do you think the Surface Pro 8's rear camera looks any better than the front camera? And we'll also take a couple of front camera pictures as well and put those side by side. So to look at the performance, I'm going to start by doing a side by side test of Cinebench R23 on the i7 version of the 7 Plus and the i5 version of the Surface Pro 8. Now the reason I'm using the i7 version of the 7 Plus is purely because that has a fan, the i5 does not, so that wouldn't be a fair test because the i5 throttles down quite hard. Now running through Cinebench R23, one thing that's really interesting is the new cooling system on the Surface Pro 8 allows it to run at much higher wattages and clock speeds. And that's particularly noticeable at how fast the actual Surface Pro 7 Plus throttles down and the fan spin up. Within one minute, the Surface Pro 7 fan spins right up. Whereas three minutes in or four minutes in on the Surface Pro 8, the fans are only just becoming audible. So there's a much better cooling solution in the Surface Pro 8. Now at the end of the test, both of the actual CPUs had throttled down a bit, but the Surface Pro 7 Plus had throttled right down to about 16, 17 watts. Whereas only at the very end of the test did the Surface Pro 8 throttle down to about 19 watts. Now it did actually lead to a score of 4,199 on the i5 Surface Pro 8, versus 4,130 on the Surface Pro 7 Plus i7. So the Surface Pro 8 i5 processor is actually beating the i7 processor from the 7 Plus, and it's also doing it quieter and cooler. Now when we look at this in a gaming environment, we're gonna use Dota for both of these machines. Now please don't focus too much on the frames per second, because obviously with these different screen sizes, they're not the same resolution. What I want you to focus on more is the actual power budget that each of these actual systems have you'll notice that the Surface Pro 8 runs at a higher power budget throughout this gaming test of about 30 odd watts and a higher clock speed on the CPU, leading to sort of better actual performance. Now the i7 of the 7 Plus throttles right down to about 17 watts very quickly. Now fortunately the i7 has a slightly better Iris graphics card with more cores enabled, so it does still play very well on that machine, but you are going to be running at a lower CPU clock speed just because of this power budget. So now that we've seen how well these performed, let's have a quick look at battery life. So performance was a big win to the Surface Pro 8. But when it comes to the battery life, now this is an area that the Surface Pro 7 holds its own. Even by switching the Surface Pro 8 to 60 hertz, it was still quite a way behind the Surface Pro 7 Plus for battery life. On our usual Wi-Fi streaming test, it was over an hour behind the 7 Plus. This really surprised me. They're the same CPUs. I know this has got a bigger screen, but they seem the same brightness, so I thought it would be a lot closer, especially by switching the Surface Pro 8 to 60 hertz. Now obviously if you leave it on 120 hertz, your battery life is gonna be even worse. So if battery life is absolutely key to you, then you may wanna consider the 7 Plus. So before we move into the conclusion, I just wanna talk about price. Obviously the Surface Pro 8 is the newer device. Whenever something that comes out that's new, obviously you're paying a premium for it. The base model of the Surface Pro 8 retails in the UK at 999 pounds. That's an incredible amount of money, especially considering that doesn't even include the type cover or the pen. Now, if you add the type cover and the pen, you're looking at about £1,280 for the entire package. That's a lot of money. The Surface Pro 7 or 7 Plus, being a generation older, obviously you could pick it up secondhand and save you some money there, but even if you're buying it brand new, there's plenty of offers and a much lower price for this package than there is for the Surface Pro 8. Also, being that this is a few years old in this design, you could buy yourself a secondhand or an older type cover and pen and save yourself even more money. You may have also had an older Surface Pro 4, 5 or 6 and have those accessories that you can use straight away on this 7 Plus. So 
that's also a consideration to take. There's a big difference in price between these two. So in conclusion, if you're looking for all out performance, you're not so bothered about the budget, I would definitely pick up the Surface Pro 8. There's so many nice little features over the 7 Plus or the 7 that make this stand out. The 120 hertz screen, the better speakers, the new type cover and much improved pen, and Thunderbolt 4 make this an incredibly compelling package, but you are gonna pay a premium for it. On the other hand, if you want to save some money, if performance isn't absolutely key, or if you're not so bothered about the slightly dated look of this model, you are getting a micro SD card slot in this package and a massive saving over the Surface Pro 8. You may want to consider this model. Now the i5 of this model is also fanless, so if fan noise of any description bothers you, that's another reason that you might want to pick up the 7 Plus. But by getting that, you are going to get much worse performance with this Surface Pro 7 than you do with the Surface Pro 8. So hopefully this has answered your questions between these two models. If you do have any more, if there's anything I've missed, please pop it down in the comments section down below and I will get back to you. And also tell me, which would you pick of these two devices? Do you think the Surface Pro 8 is a compelling reason to either A, upgrade over an older Surface Pro, or if you're going out from fresh, find the Surface Pro 8? Please let me know. And lastly, thank you for watching.